The views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL. However, we will encourage you to like and share them on Facebook. Time now for the African-American scene presented each week at this time by Howard Insurance in Port St. Lucie and hosted by Rudy Howard. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Always glad to be with you here on a Wednesday night. Got a little bit of the blues tonight, but we'll get over that. We'll get over that. Wouldn't have anything to do with a famous singer passing. No, no, no. Oh, blues, blues. uh, The blues, blues. I got the blues, blues. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, but that just too will pass. We'll Hmm. get over that. Uh, Listen, I I went to uh, Philadelphia this past weekend. And uh, one of the friends I went to high school with, she has a, a thing every year called Friends Gathering. And all the old high school people, we all got together, old and young, and we come to her house, and there's a, a, a collection of food like you can't believe. And it's every kind of southern dish oh. that you think you might want to eat. You Let me take a few guesses. Uh, were there collard greens? Yes. Were there butter beans or black eyed peas? Black eyed peas. Oh man. Oh yeah. Pig okay. feet. All right. Now, no, now no, the pic- no. not the pickled ones either. The, the cooked no, ones. No, this that are is soft. the regular yeah. pig feet. Uh, okay. She, I watched her cook them the day before. I mean, she boiled them, make sure she got all the gook out, then she put them in the oven and cooked them. I must admit, though, I didn't eat any of those. I am, I'm not a big pig feet guy. I am. You do? I, oh, you know what I like? I like the uh, in the Mexican food um, markets, they've got, uh, on Saturdays or maybe it's just Sundays, they, they've got this called menudos. And it's made with a little bit of tripe and pig's feet and, and all kinds of spices. And they use it like a detoxifier. For hangovers. I'll bet you that's over by me at, at uh, I can't think of the name of the market by me. Uh, that's a Spanish market. Uh, yeah. We have a, an Azteca. It looks like a convenience store uh, over down, uh, over an angle in Orange, but uh, uh, they have in the back, they have got a full service of food that's unbelievable. They make burritos as big around as my arm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Bravo, that was the name of the Bravo. store I was trying to think okay. of. Bravo. It's a big supermarket, but they got a great big uh, court over there for eating, and you can go down and buffet and get all Ooh. the kind of stuff that you like. Ooh. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so I went to uh, I went to uh, Willingboro via Philadelphia and, and uh, met with some old friends. Boy, I really enjoyed myself. These are guys I've known, some of them, since I was 15, 16 years old. And it was really, really good to see them. And uh, I was really proud of myself. I came back. I didn't even gain one pound. Wow. I, I <laughs> was determined. I took a look at all that food, and I went, no, I'm full. no, no, no. You no. get full looking at food. Easy. Yeah, I just, I, there was so much stuff there. I just said, no, don't fall into that trap. But now, let's look how we've evolved, though. Yeah. She had a section for vegetarians. Ooh. Well, you know, so that's like had, being polite. Uh, yes. Like being inclusive. Yeah, she had a whole section of food over there that was just for vegetarians so that they could uh, dodge all the pork and stuff that everybody else was eating. But I, but I, had, I had a great time, and when I was there, I had a real cheesesteak. Uh-oh. Well, you were in Philly. <laughs> yes. Well, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like number one on my list whenever I get a chance to go up there to visit. There has to be a cheesesteak somewhere in the process. A good old-fashioned Philly cheesesteak. Because this stuff you get around here, take it from me. It's not Guy from Philly steak. is not a Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> now, now the folks from Chicago, there are these frozen meat pies. Oh yeah, and uh, those are good. Yeah, I had uh, when I went out to Trevor's graduation from the Navy. Mm-hmm. I stayed at this hotel, and they had this double dip deep dish pizza that was oh. like, oh, 
I ate one piece and I was stuffed to the gills. <laughs> I I saw a picture of some kind of a video, some kind of pizza. It looked like a pizza on the top, but when you when you lift it out of the pan, it's several layers of pizza all together that you cut. Yeah. It, 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 it reminded me of those burgers that used to have four or five burgers on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But this looked like a pizza. Every layer was an entire pizza, and they all cooked together in, in a pot. And uh, you yeah. got to try that one. These yeah, days. yeah. Just a few bites. <laughs> Folks, we have an open mic t- night tonight, and, and I, don't, I don't even have any topics that I'm going to throw out at you, but here's what I'm interested in. How are you going to save the Republican Party? You are in such a mess. Such a mess. And, and, and here's what I'm going to tell you that I find deeply disturbing and what really hurts your party. Your party has no tolerance for people that do not walk the chalk line yeah. and speak Republican republic knees. I'm going to call it Republican knees. If you don't speak the language of Republicans and you walk off that path, you're a traitor, you're a rhino, you're this, you're that. Come on, folks. Where's the unity? Where's the team playership? Yeah, you're not, you, you don't allow for any diversity within your, your party? That's insanity. That's pure, in, that's pure insanity. Because sometimes the person who speaks against the majority is right. And, and, and let's, let's take an example of somebody. I, I just was reminded about it. I think it was this morning. If you recall, when they brought down Richard Nixon, the first person that spoke negatively about him was Senator Edward Brooke. Now, maybe some of you don't know who that is. That was the first black senator since Reconstruction that was elected to the Senate. He took death threats. He had to have police escorts. But guess what? He was right. Oh. <laughs> Seven months later, and Richard Nixon was out of that office. Wow. But he had the courage of his convictions to stand stand up and say, he's got to go. But that's what's missing today, Rudy, the, the lack of conviction. Yeah. It's almost like when you said, when you told me what we were going to talk about tonight, and, and, and I, I'm quite tongue-in-cheek all the time, but it's true, though. What Republican Party where? It's like I don't see any evidence that one even exists now, hardly. Well, yes, because it's 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 like dissolved like an alka seltzer in water. <laughs> what? Listen, here and here's a, the Republicans who are in the Republican Party have been so become so wedded to ideology. Yeah, they do not allow facts to penetrate. Yeah. Now that that's one of my biggest frustrations with when I'm having a discussion. With Republicans, facts, that's how you can tell it's ideology. Yeah, facts be damned. There's no, yeah. there's no room for facts. Yeah. You, you, you say the ideology and you stick with it. Now I was at Walmart on Monday. Guy comes by me, my by the desk, and he starts talking to me. and He says, "This country is in bad shape," and I said, "Yeah." He says, "Yes, we got all these people out here getting public assistance, and they do not work." I said, yeah. He says, yes. That's the problem. That's why we have a deficit. Because we have people out here that's getting public assistance and they don't work. So I looked at him and I said, you, are you sure about that? He said, I'm positive. I said, well, okay. Let me, let me, let me. I said, and so I, I gave him the thing that I talked about last week. I said, okay, now I, I just wave my magic wand for you, my friend. I've just taken uh, dishwashers, fruit pickers, hotel workers, lawn workers, golf cart personnel uh, off of public assistance. So uh, 
Now, they no longer are public sisters. So who are you going to get to... Who are you going to get to do that work? So he looked at me. He said, but those people aren't on public assistance. I said... Oh, yeah? <laughs> yes, you they are. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> You're going to work 20 hours a week at Walmart? And, uh, and well, 20 hours a week... It, if they're trying to get some of them are trying to get get rid of the forty hour week. And Listen, I got I, I, I have a, uh I gotta be careful about I'm not gonna say what I was gonna say. But right. but I but I'm uh but I will say this to you. I have done research and I've talked about it on here before. Mm-hmm. Contrary to what most people think, the average person on public assistance works. Mm-hmm. Just like we found out when we had Roxanne here that the homeless people they work oh, they yeah. go to work every day and, and and this concept that people want to sit around and just leech off the system well are there some of those absolutely there are some but they're the minority they're not the majority the minority and so you 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 pin yourself to those ideals and, and and you pound them like a hammer to a nail and and all of a sudden now that is inculcated into your own thinking that people are lazy and don't want to work. So what happens when you assume, when you make assumptions. Yeah, and it's just well it's, well, it's just not true. You know, most people want to work you know oh, yeah. it's 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 a matter even of self-esteem who the heck wants to sit around all day long and do nothing now there's some people that that's okay with i would it be okay with you cliff no i'm a <laughs> multitasker i go nuts if i don't have at least five things to do at the same time <laughs> right i would <laughs> i couldn't handle that either sit around do nothing all day i could i, I don't know but but in any event so so my question how are you going to save your party? Please call me up. Tell me what, what's your solution to saving your party? There's some of you out there who are clinging to uh, Donald Trump and won't let go. But I'm just going to say this to you. And Carol and I talked about this uh, today. Never in my life have I heard the press call the president a liar until now. And he has no shame. He lies and lies and lies and feels no guilt, no remorse, and he will tell a lie today, and tomorrow he'll wake up and tell another one. It is just unbelievable. I don't even, how can you be loyal to this man, and how can that, coincide with your Christian values. I, I don't get it. Hmm. You know, I, I really don't. What did they teach us when we were kids? Really, they, they said, if you tell a lie, well, at some point, you're going to have to tell another lie to back up the first lie. And then you're going to have to tell several more lies to reiterate the first lie. And, and next thing you know, you've t- told a lot of lies. You've become a liar. Yes, it's, it's <laughs> unbelievable. And, and, and listen, I feel aggrieved at the thought of saying that my president is a liar. That bothers me that I, that I have to say that, but I can't even, I can't come up with mischaracterization. I can't come up with misstatement. The man just absolutely just tells lies, and I mean, very, very frustrating. And we have Jeff on line one. Hey, hey Rudy. Yes, how you doing? Good. I'm concerned that they all lie to us. They all do. You know, when Hillary Clinton stood up there with that little white room cloth, what do you mean clean it? Like this? Come on, Rudy. That's, uh, that. I mean, the senator sat there and took that. I mean, come on, they're not that stupid. And she's not that stupid. And, you know, you just find out about the, the papers, the dossier today, that the whole thing was a lie about Trump's coercion stuff. It was all made up. 
Now, that's not true. Who's not lying to us? That that's not true. That's not true. What the dossier papers weren't made up? Yes, they were not made up. Oh yes, they were. No, they weren't. They, they got they got proof. They got the guy that made them up. They have interviewed the guy that made them up. That made up the dossier, and the dossier was originally financed by the Republican Party by a candidate that was running against Trump. A, a disgruntled candidate running for Trump. After that, he gave it over to, I guess, the Democratic National Committee got yeah. hold to it, and then they took it to a lip. Yeah. But all this, all this is, why do they stoop to do such stupid things? Well, I you know. It, 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 it is our whole country. I mean, you know, Rudy, if you and I got in an argument, and we had a big bill that was going to impact the American people. But I'm going to get even with you, Rudy, because I'm going to vote against it. Even though it could be good. It could be the cure for cancer. But we're going to vote against it because I got an issue with you. That's the most ridiculous thing. I can't believe people are doing this. I mean, this is the country. Not just, you know, not just Trump. All of them. What does it take to get an honest man in there? I guess we saw that what happened to Jimmy Carter. But that's beside the point. Well, yes, that that is that's a good you know, example. And, and it is, it's so disgusting. And then when you sit there and you, and you and you watch this on the news, you know, you know, you watch, you know, MSNB or CNN, and, and and everybody's attacking everybody else. And boy, if you raise your hand at the wrong time, you're you're a, you're you're a racist, or you're this, or you're that. You know. And, and if I hear one more time that most white people are racist, I'm going to scream because. I'm a white guy. I'm a musician. Music, music has no color. Has no color. I, when you're I, playing I don't, I don't think that. in a band, there's no color. And it's like, I don't understand where our country's going, man. I, do they want us to fight each other? Do they want us to, you know, the little guy's got to step up somehow. I don't understand it. But I'm going to let you finish this up and you know, explain to the people where my frustration is. And my frustration, I think, is probably about 60% of the American people out there that are just looking there, holding their hands up, like, what do we believe? Everybody's lied to us so much, we have no clue anymore. Well, listen. All right, Rudy, have a good night. Okay, all right, take care. Yeah, I don't think that most people believe that all white people are racist, not, not even for a half a second. The, do most black people believe, believe that? But here's what I will say. I do think too many of my white brothers and sisters lack a certain level of sensitivity about the things and the issues that affect the black community, okay? If, for example, this take a knee thing. The take a knee thing is an issue because the cops keep killing people with video evidence and are getting off. Now, I got to tell you something. You can say, well, they kill white people. Yeah, they do. Cops kill white people. I've yet to see a video where a cop killed a white person for no cause, for what appeared to be no cause, and there be no consequences. You have to care about that. You have to care about that. If you don't want people to take a knee, care about that. Tell the judges, tell your congressmen, tell your city council, you care that people are getting shot with no accountability. That is how you stop it. It's going to keep happening until somebody does. Well, you, well, you have to. Like, Listen, like I said last week, the best medicine that kept me out of a lot of trouble, and I'm sure for you too, Cliff, Sometime I'm with the guys when I was a kid. We talked about this on the weekend because some of them knew my father very well. And I said, I'd be with the guys and they'd say, okay, we're going to go over here and do this. 
and my father would be on my right shoulder and he'd say, if I catch you, <laughs> I'm going to beat the crap out of you. <laughs> in, in similar words. <clears throat> yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so now all of a sudden you say, well, I don't think I'm going to do that. Not a good idea. <laughs> Oh, come on, Rube. Come on, come on. Don't be a chicken. Uh, yeah, there you, that, that's the peer pressure thing. Yes, yep, yes, yes, yep. yes. Well, today I'm going to be a chicken because I'm more scared of my father than I am scared of you. And so the, 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 so the point, if you are accountable for your behavior and it's clear that you're going to be accountable for your behavior, mm-hmm. you will think twice about doing it. That's the whole point. And, and you know, see, here, here's the other point you have to get. Even if they lose, even if you take the case to court and they lose, they will have had a chance to have justice. When you take away that opportunity to have justice, that's when the frustration builds and people become angry. And we got Winnie on line one. Yes, Winnie. Hey, Rudy, how are y'all doing? You were clear. I had, uh, yeah, take your lead. I'm glad that uh, Cola Capital started that uh, FBS football player. Okay. And then on top of that, Chuck Curry Jones out of West Park beat the bit two years with that police officer had. He broke down on our lot of five. Broke down in the best out of that police, police officer shot and killed him. That, that, that's the doctor. Cliff that's and I was... He broke, broke yeah. down, broke down on I 95, two year anniversary. They were talking about on the news about that. But that's good that it's, you know, uh, uh, Colin, you know, making a stand, making a stand about that. Because that's what he was saying. The police officer killing people. And and, uh, and nothing ain't get done about it. Well, you can't, about you can't. it like every garden about that man, the police officer in New York did that choke. That they, you know, that choke on him. He said, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. They said that man, he got a dead job. That police officer did that. He got a dead job. And then, then they gave him a raise. Yeah. That's, yeah. Ter- that's terrible. Yes, it is. Yeah. Anyway, we'll be talking. Have okay. a good night. Thank you, Winnie. Yeah, she's right. That's, well, but that's know, the point I'm, I'm making. I watched the news the last couple of days. It was, I think it was Palm Beach County officer. I'm not sure what, or whether it was Palm Beach County or city, but uh, uh, video caught this guy. This 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 man was sick and was taken to the hospital uh, after the emergency responders showed up and, and took him to the hospital. And the, the man later died. An officer was going through his house stealing his medication and pocketing pills, and, and they caught this guy, and he was an officer of the law. Jeez. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, the video camera thing is a good thing because, uh, y- you know, you have to have evidence. Well, by golly, there's more evidence out there now than there's ever been. Everybody's got a cell phone. Well, yes, and, 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 and the thing is that uh, what is so frustrating, it seems to not matter in too many cases. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, the the ones that she talked about, there there's just too many times when it, when it just doesn't matter. Yeah. But I want to get back to this. Uh, how are you going to save the Republican Party? You had Jeff Flake, senator from Arizona, and... Uh, um, Bob uh, Corey, or I can't think of how to pronounce his last name. And they're both suggesting that the bad behavior of uh, President Trump is having a negative effect on our country. Now, I can tell you from some friends that I was with over this past weekend who have traveled uh, to other countries, they are like not understanding 
what the heck is going on here? He is so far from anything like what we have ever had in the White House that it is making people nervous around the world about who America is and what does America stand for. I don't know. It, it, it is, uh, I, I will have to tell you, I, I love this country. I know nothing else. I absolutely know nothing else. I can't, I don't know that I have a grandfather from Africa or where, I, I don't know anything else but America. So this is my country and I do love my country. And, and this guy isn't an embarrassment to me. I am embarrassed by the nature of this president. His lies, his bombastic behavior, which people seem to feel is cute. I don't think it's cute. I think the president is a person of great dignity. That office is, is, is to one to be held up as great dignity. And, and I will say this to you, and, and this will certainly make some of you mad. I heard two Republicans say, last week they said to me, they said in, in an interview, well, I may have disagreed with President Obama but him and his wife were total class. I said, yeah. oh, now that he's out of office, you're willing to admit that? Most of us already knew that long before he left out of office, that the man was class. People called him names. I've seen people in speeches, when he's given speeches, and people try to be rude to him, and I've heard him say, stop, let him talk. This is America. Yeah. He's allowed to give his opinion. Let, let the man talk. Does, he, he was not thin-skinned. I got to believe some of the stuff that happened to him bothered him. But he was such a classy guy, he took that stuff and just kept right on going. Plus, he was the president. Yes. <laughs> you know, you got to think about that, uh uh, a lot of people had to be reminded of, of their school days and their Sunday school days when they were taught to, to respect our elected officials and our leaders. Yes. And uh, that's right out the window. I don't understand how that happened. Uh, how much ha has religion become that defiant towards uh, politics uh, to just put ideology out there first and, and not tolerate anything else or anybody that they don't like. Well, That's here, wrong. Here, here's the example that I like to give. When I was in New York City and uh, I ran a big organization, and I think you've heard me talk about it before, I had 80 people. When I made somebody a supervisor, one of the things that I would tell them is, I just gave you the title of supervisor. I can't make you be a supervisor. <coughs> you will have to make yourself be a supervisor. And you'll be a supervisor when people respond to your direction and accept your authority. And that's something that you, you must earn. You have to earn that. So if you've ever played sports... I played for a basketball coach many years ago. Bob Medic could tell me something. He could give me a rah-rah speech, and when that speech was over, I felt like I would run through the wall for him. And then I had other guys that would give me the speech, and I'd be sitting there going, oh, Lord, please. Yes, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let that be over quickly. Don't you love the inspirers? Of course. So, so what's the point? The point, the point is that part of what our president's responsibility is is to inspire you, to make you want to be 
and a proud American. That's part of it, by his word and deed that uh, wants to make you be a proud American. And, uh, and, uh, and listen, you could hate Obama all you want, but there's nothing that he ever did that would make you feel as though that he was acting in an un-American kind of way. Well, we're going to take a little break here, and, and if you want to call up, I, I want to know how you're going to save your Republican Party. What does the Republican Party need to save itself? Yes, please tell me. I'm interested to hear from all my Republican listeners out there. Tell me what the prescription is to save the Republican Party. And that phone number is 3401590. That's 3401590. And don't touch that dial because we'll be right back with the African Americans. The Howard Insurance Agency in Port St. Lucie reminds you every year around this time we have what's called the open enrollment period going on now through December 7th for people who receive Medicare. It's a time when you should review your plan, make changes, and switch to another plan if you choose to. There are many cost-saving options and it can become quite confusing. That's where the Howard Insurance Agency can help. Call Rudy Howard at 343-9878. If you have Medicare insurance questions, He'll be glad to help with no cost for assistance. Remember, at the Howard Insurance Agency, they offer a wide range of insurance products, homeowners, auto coverage, and business insurance. So for all your insurance needs, call Rudy Howard of the Howard Insurance Agency, 343-9878, 343-9878. Serving the entire Treasure Coast from their offices at 600 Southwest Darwin Boulevard, Port St. Lucie. Visit online, rbhoward.com. Major League Baseball's World Series takes center stage on WPSL. It's the L.A. Dodgers versus the Houston Astros. Games 1 and 2 are featured on Tuesday and Wednesday with games 3, 4, and 5 on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights at 7.30 on WPSL, your home of the World Series for 24 years. The Mets, Marlins, and Best of Baseball is brought to you by Treasure Coast Alexis of Fort Pierce, Treasure Coast Toyota of Stewart, Dave's Diner of Fort Pierce, Code Red Roofers, the Quit Dock Foundation of Martin County, Bar Fusion of Port St. Lucie, Hoskins, Turco, Lloyd and Lloyd, and St. Lucie Draft House. I'm CBS 12 meteorologist Kate Wenzel. Hope you're enjoying this first taste of fall-like weather across the Treasure Coast. For tonight, we'll see mostly clear skies staying dry with low temperatures dropping down into the upper 40s and low 50s. And then a nice warm-up by Thursday afternoon into the mid-70s with mostly sunny skies and winds out of the northwest at 5 to 10. For Thursday evening, still cool but not as chilly with a low temp near 61 degrees and our winds out of the northwest around 5. For Friday, mostly sunny skies, a high temp near 79. From the Storm Truck Weather Center at CBS 12 News, I'm meteorologist Kate Wenzel for WPSL Digital 1590. WPSL, the talk of the Treasure Coast. Weather this hour is brought to you by Seacoast Air Conditioning, your hometown air conditioning company since 1982. For repairs or a whole new system, call 772-466-2400. Comfort crisis, don't roast, call Seacoast. In all of it. Rudy has a challenge for you tonight, folks. What needs to be done to help the Republican Party get back to normal? And uh, just another reminder here, we are less than 20 minutes away from uh, the beginning of our Game 2 of the World Series uh, tonight here on WPSL, right after Rudy's show. But right now, back to Rudy Howard. Okay. Well, I'm still listening. I, I would like to think one of the things that... Uh, Republicans need to do to even expand their base. If, if you recall, in the last election cycle, I told you there was an opportunity for you to get more African-Americans within the party, but you whiffed that opportunity. One of the things that you can do is uh, to not be so ideologically rigid. Your rigid ideologic ideology is is kind of a turnoff. I know many years ago there were people that was trying to tell me that I was a Republican and I said no I'm not and they said well you know you're a businessman and this and that and the other I said no you go too far 
to the right for me, and I just I can't I can't go with that. That's that's where you lose me. Now we're getting ready to do a, now, now. Now I want you to think about this. We're getting ready to do tax reform and a budget cut, right? Our infrastructure is in horrendous condition. Horrendous. We need roads. We need bridges. Some of our bridges are about to fall down. We need to spend money on our country. Our rail system is antiquated. And one time, we had the best infrastructure in the world, no more. And you would think, and this is something I talked about before, Flint gave us a wake-up call. How old do you think those pipes are in Fort Pierce? Do they last forever? Do you think at some point that we will have to have some maintenance work done on the pipes so as not to give people poison water? Have you ever seen pipes that have had sulfur water going through them? Okay, you've got a lot of homes still, older ones, in, in, in this area that just simply converted to, uh, to different water, and those pipes are still deteriorated from the sulfur. So, so, so my point is this. You keep asking for tax cuts. When the heck are we going to take care of our country? How are you going to fix the country if there's no money to fix it? I would like to have more money in my pocket, but if I want my house to stay up to snuff, I got to spend some money on my house. I can't keep all the money in my pocket. Uh, hello? Am I reaching you? You want a tax cut and the country's falling apart? Uh, how does that work? Come on, folks. Think. Stop being selfish. That's that. That is the mode that we have fallen into, the trap that we've fallen into since the 1980s that makes me ill. We are so self-absorbed and self-centered and self-concerned that we can't see what's right in front of our face. Have you seen, I've been on the Montreal rail system. Cliff, it is a magnificent thing. It's got rubber wheels. Rubber wheels. Rubber wheels. It's got rubber, it's so quiet. Railroad? railroad. Yes, <laughs> the railroad car has rubber wheels. Wow. And when it's moving, it is just so, it's so quiet. Yeah. And then if you, if you look at what they, they took Washington, D.C., and they took that metro, and I was there when they first started working on that metro, and that metro now is absolutely fantastic. You can go anywhere in Washington within a few minutes on that doggone metro liner. Wow. But where's the rest of our country? And, and if you think back, Cliff, especially you and I growing up in the Northeast, mm -hmm. I can tell you in Philadelphia, I could get a trolley, I could get a bus, and you remember the old electric buses that had the little, the electric uh, rod that on the street? It would, t it would, it would hang off of a, of a wire going over the track, right? Yes. And and it would power the uh, the vehicle to move down the road. Yes. The 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 San Francisco uh, rice aroni commercial always had a a trolley like. Uh, vehicle in it yes it like that yeah. yes I remember that so so what what happened what happened we we have to give the money to the stockholders and we can't give any money to our to fix our country so when when are we gonna wake up cliff do you think there is a point where we wake up and figure out that we must invest money in our country well, first, before anybody can uh, even imagine a, a, a fix for this, first and foremost, we have to admit there's a problem. It's very, very similar 
to uh, 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 say an, an alcoholic who was a closet alcoholic, but definitely had a problem, but would keep uh, denying that they have a problem and continue to hide in the closet and drink up all their booze. And, and then uh, they can't really get out of it. It becomes an addiction. And in order to cure any addiction, you must first admit you have a problem. And that's not happening. They're refusing. Folks are refusing to admit there's a problem. Otherwise, we'd have gotten some calls by now on this. You would think somebody <laughs> would think enough to think and, and, and maybe, hey, here's a possible solution. We're not looking for you to get the answer. We're looking for suggestions. This is a discussion type of show. It's a talk radio show. You're supposed to call and talk, right? That's correct. Absolutely. So, you, you know, I, I, and, I, and I, think, I think he's right. I think we do have to say to ourselves that there are some issues that we need to deal with oh, as far yeah. as our, our country is concerned. We, we, just, we just have to get with that. Jay, how are you, sir? Okay, how you doing, Rudy? Glad okay. to hear your voice, man. Yes. Uh, you know, I was just listening to what you were saying about the, uh, about the trains transportation uh, systems and it's like we we started out as the pioneer no question yeah yeah we you know we started out as the pioneers for the rail and I, you know stuff like that and mm-hmm. you, know, I, you know I read up a little bit on it and it's it's just so sad that uh, we we fell in love what it is uh, you got these uh, people from Exxon uh, lobbyists going into Washington telling the Congress and the senators don't pass this don't pass then we had a, we have a, 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 a right here a governor uh, right here in Florida, that we turned down uh, almost a billion dollars to uh, improve our transit, our system, our ro- a rail system here in Florida. There you go. Uh, with this, the stimulus, when Obama said, was ready to send him a check, and he, you know, he was so you know partisan that he said, "No, nah, we're not going to take any money from Washington to, uh, and make 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 Obama look good." No, it's the people. It's going to help the people here get around. And I would love to have a, a, a nice rail going going straight down. Uh, the East Coast, right all the way, you know, straight from Miami all the way to, uh, you know, Maine. You know what I mean? Well, Jay, look, they could look. do it, and you know, you know, right along the East Coast, but they don't want to. You know, they just, they fell in love with uh, getting that money from the oil companies because they don't. You know, they know as soon as uh, people stop driving these cars, yeah. and they they find that it's easier and more comfortable and less stress and strain uh, driving the car up and down 95. You know, they they they, they figured that. Uh, We'll give these senators and these congressmen, and we we'll give them some money to keep them voting against it. Now, now, Jay, and even improving it. it. That's why they have so many accidents. Uh, uh, you know, on that car, or that car from Washington to New York. Well, they have well, all kinds of problems. Here, simple things that can be done. Here, here's a here's a, a real simple one right here. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever tried it. Have you ever done the auto train? Yeah. Why do I have to drive all the way to Sanford? To get the auto train. Yeah. Why? Crazy, we have man. we have such a huge population center between here and Miami. Do you think if the auto train was set up to make a stop in West Palm Beach that that thing couldn't fill up? They can do so many things, man, with the with the rails and uh, make make it improve and make it more streamlined. And like you said, you know, they got trains running in Europe. That's why every now and then when I I go, you know, I like going over there. Uh, the trains are so comfortable, so clean, and and you know they got bullet trains, trains to get you. We yep. got to go like from, you know, they can do one from. They're always talking about from Washington to uh, New York. They can they can do it in an hour if they did it right. If they really wanted to do it, absolutely. It take, uh, probably just about an hour. Yeah, that, that's part of less. the problem that nobody wants to admit. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, see, that's that's the thing. They they just don't want to, you know. And if we would have the same rails like they have in Europe and other places. And especially in, uh, you, you go to China and you know Korea, North Korea, you know South Korea, those places. Uh, they they have tremendous. Uh, that's what they do, and the people, uh, they, you know, they love it. But here, the, uh, the, the you know the, between you know the petroleum companies, they just they they run roughshod. They just dominate everything, and it's money. You know, it's all about money. And here we, they they get money. You know, these, these congressmen get all of this money. They come in there broke. They come in there very. You know, uh, no, with no money, and they leave out as a millionaire because they're getting all this money from the lobbyists who wants to buy them out. I just want to say one thing about patriotism. My father fought in World War II, 
and then he was a he was a, he was an MP, he was military policeman. He had to guard German prisoners in the South for a while. And as he was transporting them from one place to one from one base to another through the through the South, they would stop to to eat. And the uh, custod the people at the different restaurants said that uh, he had to go he had to go around the back to get his food, but the German prisoner could come inside. That same mentality, I think, is going on now. They forget that the Germans killed a lot of Americans and they, a lot of Europeans and tried to take over and dominate the world. And then you look at Russia. You got these people, cater, you know, catering and coddling up to Russia, and uh, Russia really don't care anything. They would get ready to blow up the world if it wasn't for John F. Kennedy. Yeah. They seem like they got a short memory span here, who the enemies are and who is not, and they're, and they're parading around with this with these Nazi uh, uh, with all of this stuff on their arm and going out of Virginia, and, and like they do, they were proud of it. And these are the same people that might have killed some of their relatives. Yep. You know, it's how stupid it is, man. I look at it and I just shake my head. I can't believe what I'm seeing. And, they, and these are the people that are supposed to be so patriotic. You know, they fall in love with Trump and all this nonsense, and he defends them. And you get people come on your radio station and defend that. And uh, is this, is this, is this a, it's a sad commentary, but I just hope that people wake up before it's too late. Yes. Like the people in uh, Germany did back in uh, the 30s, they were, they didn't wake up in time. It was too late. I hope so because uh, I'll tell you quite frankly what Trump has made me realize is that our democracy is an imperfect idea that has to be protected, and it's a little more fragile than I thought it was mm -hmm. because he, he's tearing at some of the fibers – of our democracy, and and I don't I don't I don't like the way it feels. Like he's trying, yeah, like he's talking. he's trying to shut down the press. Are you? Oh kidding yeah, that's, me? well, that's all part of what dictators do. Yeah, that's part of that's that's the first step. You know, you look at Mussolini, you look at Hitler, all of them. That's what they do. They they take over the take over the media and everything, and just run rough shot, scare everybody to death, and threaten, put people away, have people executed. That's what. Uh, Putin is doing over there right now in Russia. If anybody don't go along with him, man, you find they find a bullet in the back of their head. That's right. So uh, that's that's the kind of you know democracy. It's not even a democracy; it's dictatorship. And we got people, the Americans, running behind and defending that crap over there in Russia and trying to make it like there's nothing going on when we know what's happening. And it's just a sad commentary for for our, for our youngsters to see this. And they they got to the young. It's going to be up to the young people to change this country because that's I think all the ones are they're, they're lost. They're gone. Because they're running behind this guy, and they really don't even know what the heck what the heck they're getting involved with. Yeah. Until, until it'll be too late. Yeah. All right, Jim. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Take Jay. Care. I got to tell you. Right. Listen, folks. You know, we we go from fast to uh, to from uh, from fast to uh, over overload. <laughs> We've got two concerts coming up next weekend on the same day. We got Najee. It's going to be at the Sunrise. Uh, being put on by the AKAs, and we have uh, the Luther Relived show. It's going to be at the Port St. Lucie, Lucie Civic Center. Now, I'll tell you truthfully, if one of my favorite artists of all times is Luther Vandross, not even, not even close, Luther and I spent a mini wonderful night together <laughs> that sounds good <laughs> oh, you talk about enjoying the music he was very instrumental into some very good evenings i had ah <laughs> he was there <laughs> in a way <laughs> oh, okay. well this guy i saw him he was here last year this guy sounds exactly like luther and he looks like luther Oh. And I'll tell you what, if you're a Luther Vandross fan, you definitely want to go see that. I, I, I got to tell you, though, I, I, it's tough. You got Najee, who I'm a big Najee fan, and then you got Luther, but I, I got to go see Luther. And if you want information on uh, how to get tickets, you know, call my office, 343-9878. I'll, I'll tell you how to get tickets for either one. But uh, I'll tell you, man. Uh, that that Luther Relive conference that I saw last year, this guy just he just blew me away. Even his backup singers were just like <laughs> Luther's back, backup singers. They was really really good. Well, folks, I you know I I tried to get you to help me solve a problem. 
and y'all kind of wimped out on me tonight. I wanted you to tell me how we were going to fix the Republican Party. Well, see, <sighs> it's broken so severely that a fi- there's no quick, easy fix. See, it's a, it's a thinker. It's a hard yeah. thinker. And I thought maybe somebody might <sighs> thought enough about it to maybe try to maybe suggest some ideas. That's that's the whole idea of talk radio. First and foremost, we first have to admit that there's a problem, then we got to talk about it. And uh, if nobody wants to step forward and uh, and start the conversation, that that's that's okay. We got next week. Yeah. And, and, we can. and, and listen, I'm going to shock you. I want you to save the Republican Party because I happen to think, as and if you've listened to me for some time, I've said this probably about two million times. We are at our very best when you can melt the ideas of Democrats and Republicans. It's called balance. Yeah, we are at our very best when you can do that. So uh, I, uh, you, you get my full support on trying to come up with a solution to make that work. I'll tell you. So, but but in any event, um, I would like to thank you for listening to the African American scene. We do this every week. Every, yeah, every Wednesday night. Every, every wow. Wednesday night, and. God bless you, Fats Domino. On Blueberry Hill, we loved you. Forever. Love to hear you. Blueberry Hill forever. Yeah. <laughs> well, God bless and be safe. And I will see you next Wednesday right here on the African American Scene. The African American Scene is presented each week by Howard Insurance in Port St. Lucie. Ro- yeah, hosted by Rudy Howard. And well, tonight, followed by Game Two of the World Series. How about that, Rudy? Yeah, Rudy's show tonight was the opening act for the Game Tour of the World Series. And then uh, games uh, three, uh, four, and five were Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, we got a promo running, you'll hear. And, of course, listen to WPSL, and you'll hear more information about that. But uh, we're about to turn things over to good old ESPN is going to be handling tonight's uh, game. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie. The African-American scene with Rudy Howard's just another one of the many reasons why WPSL is the talk of the Treasure Coast. Time right now is 7 o'clock.